Uh, and finally, Joe Atkinson from the University of Auckland, an old uh, friend of mine and an absolute authority on the whole area of politics and media. Joe. Thank you. Claire pinched my introduction. I, uh, I think almost everything the government has said about TVNZ is wrong. Uh, and particularly, they say we can't afford it and nobody watches it. Um, they go on to say that digitalization will supply new, more new stuff than anybody can possibly need and that, and that free market competition will raise the quality and lower the cost of programming. That's all complete bollocks. <laughs> We're told we can't afford uh, public service television, but as a proportion of GDP, the cost of public broadcasting is a tiny fraction of 1%, and the cost of TVNZ7 is but a small fraction of that. Indeed, even the $16 million that TVNZ says it spends on Channel 7 is probably inflated to cross-subsidise the fixed costs associated with commercial television. Is that why they're not releasing any information about what's going on inside that company? And just remember that uh, uh, th th those fixed costs are things like exorbitant executive salaries, presenter salaries, lavish marketing, expensive live eye trucks and so on. You don't need any of that stuff to, to uh, produce good uh, uh, good public service television. It wouldn't surprise me if TVNZ had rorted the public purse in this way, given the way it's been rorted itself by successive governments in the one hand gives, the other one takes away behaviour with dividends and so on. So we can easily, easily afford it. I'd be amazed if the real cost of keeping it were as much as $10 million. And we can easily find ways of paying for much more than TVNZ7 without troubling the consolidated fund. Peter Thompson reckons we could not only fund a, a PSB TV channel like, like uh, TVNZ7, but also support our ailing regional and community broadcasters, double the platinum fund, and increase the funding of both Maori television and Radio New Zealand by 30 to 40 per cent, with a mere 1% levy on the, on the telecommunications and pay TV providers. The, the $60 million thus raised would cost the levied companies virtually nothing because they'd pass it immediately on to their customers, half of whom already pay many, many, many times over as Sky Television subscribers for programs they watch less often than the free-to-air ones that are available to them free. So we can easily afford it. Forget about nobody watches it. We watch it, and a lot of other people do too. The claim that Channel 7 is for pointy heads <laughs> is just silly. There's nothing on New Zealand free-to-air television that's for pointy heads. <laughs> Actually, the opposite is true. Public service broadcasting is generally more accessible to ordinary people than commercial television. Commercial broadcasters pay lip service to popular tastes, but in practice they're ruthless exploiters of audiences on behalf of advertisers, who don't give a damn about the poor, the elderly, other minorities, and so on. How gobsmackingly cynical can you be to introduce TVNZ7 to tease people onto the digital platform, and then replace it with TV plus one when they've obeyed the call, which is replacing it with nothing. In recent overseas research, public service media systems have been found to attract larger audiences, devote more attention to public and international affairs, to foster greater public knowledge, particularly among the otherwise disadvantaged, in comparison with their more commercial counterparts. And that's a comparative research which looks at uh, uh, media systems across different kinds of uh, uh, broadcasting structure. Uh, mixed systems like the BBC and the, the, the British system, uh, purely public service systems like Finland and, and Denmark, and wholly commercial systems uh, uh, like the United States. Uh, so there's, there's respectable empirical research about the superiority of, uh, 
uh, a public service television in terms of communicating with ordinary people. Knowing how to make money out of broadcasting is not the same thing as being able to understand the economics of broadcasting. Demographic forces and business considerations shape the commercial media much more than broad audience demands, let alone individual audience demands. We're also often assured that digitalization will somehow repair the market failures. But digital con convergence actually makes things much worse by multiplying media channels, fragmenting audiences, spawning a flight to entertainment, and intensifying competition for public attention, uh, which in turn increases oligop oligopoly pressures and so on, monopoly, monopoly pressures and so on. Uh, the the uh, real competition in these kinds of markets is not, uh, but, uh, not between uh, uh, program makers, uh, but between uh, program distributors who own the libraries to uh, entertainment products that they endlessly recycle uh, for a profit. In the end, it's the socio-political costs of not having public service broadcast television that make the case for keeping TVNZ7 absolutely compelling. It is those negative externalities that make it entirely legitimate to ask commercial corporations to shoulder the tiny proportion of the costs they impose on citizens in return for the privilege of profiting from that market. Communication products are distinctively public goods, not just in the economic sense of, be of not being destroyed in use and therefore not being naturally scarce, hence the need for set-top bo boxes, manipulative program bundling, copyright laws and other means of commercial enclosure, but also in the political sense of being central to the provision of common resources for citizenship. Left to their own devices, commercial systems favour consumers over citizens and economic voices over political ones. That's why the commercial classes oppose, uh, 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 oppose all other rights. Uh, they think, uh, oppose, uh, oppose public broadcasting, that is to say, because they think their, their God-given right to make a profit trumps everything else, but it doesn't or it shouldn't, which is why we need TVNZ7. We need much more than that, of course, and I would prioritise other uh, uh, things. For instance, I would prioritise a rewriting of the brief of New Zealand On Air to insulate its funding more effectively from commercial pressures. I hope that later we will be able to have a discussion about other measures we might take to improve the black hole that is now New Zealand television. Thank you.